Gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Minnesota Sports Talk presenting Under the Lights with your hosts, Justin and Dave, next in three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? This is Under the Lights on a Monday. This is Justin with Purple and Gold for Days. Dave with Minnesota Sports Talk and our very, very special guest, SK. What's up? How are you this evening, our friend? Man, I'm good. I'm living. I'm here. I'm talking about Vikings. I, it's off season. We're getting ready for this free agency, this draft. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. All right, we are. Well, before we get started, you've got some announcements to make about a news channel that you have revamped, revitalized, and brought back from the dead. Why don't you give us a quick rundown on what's oh, going on, man? We, we were never dead, Justin. We were <laughs> well, never I, dead. I, we, we, we were just in. Let the resurrection begin. <laughs> let the we resurrection begin. Holy water. Yeah, we were just in hibernation, man. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we have a brand new media network, Purple and Scold Media. Make sure you guys give it a follow on Facebook. And subscribe on YouTube. We got all of our top content creators, and we're adding a few more to, or we're in the process of adding a few more to. We got our guy Justin Day on there. Dave just agreed to uh, doing a show. It might be with Matt Rap. It might be, you know, a solo show. Who knows? Dave's going to surprise us. Uh, but we also got, of course, Rap and the Purple Pocket Podcast, uh, and then GG Sports with Jamie and Casey. And like I said, we're adding a couple more, but. We're doing big things, man. We're doing big things. So be sure to tap in, follow us, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Purple and Scold Media. So I am just going to start off with the softball question here that <clears throat> for anybody that hasn't seen you, I know a lot of our a lot of our uh, followers, our crossovers here, but just give us the two minute rundown of how you became a Vikings fan and why you decided to jump into this fun fandom that we have that we all the purple pain as they say <laughs> what's your story sk well well believe it or not i i actually got to choose my football team growing up i didn't grow up in the minnesota area and believe it or not i chose to be a vikings fan i wasn't born into this i wasn't born in minnesota i didn't grow up there i'm actually in california uh, but at the time when i started watching football we didn't have a team out here in the la area i'm about an hour, hour and a half east of L.A. So it was either the 49ers, the Raiders, or the Chargers. I was like, nah, I'm good. And at that time, 97, 98, 99, this is prime Randy Moss, Chris Carter, Randall Cunningham. And then that jumped me into the Dante Culpepper era. And I just, I just been in this pain and suffering ever since, man. So here I am with you guys talking Vikings football now and wishing we – would have played in the Super Bowl a couple of weeks back. But hey, yeah, it's all it's all good. I have some questions. <laughs> Tell me about the auto autograph mini helmets behind you. Is that a Tom Brady? Oh man, no, it's I wish it was a Tom Brady. That's, <laughs> <laughs> everything everything is Vikings related up here, including the Michigan Wolverines helmet. That is an Anthony Carter. Uh oh god, that's cool. Helmet. So yeah, I, I kind of I had to keep it still Vikings up here, but this nice blaze one, this golden right here is a Kirk Cousins. And then this uh, throwback one here at the bottom is another Anthony Carter. So, yeah, if anybody wants to trade me for a Tom Brady, I'm, I'm more than willing. You know, <laughs> Michigan, Michigan Patriots or uh, or Buccaneers, either one I'll take. <laughs> so that brings up a very good point. You're also a fan of Michigan, if I understand, if I recall cor oh, recollect yeah. correctly. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Go blue. I actually got to see uh, Tom Brady play. Uh, I was living in Florida at that time too, and uh, it was uh, his junior year. It was Florida, uh, not sorry, it was Tennessee against Michigan. Michigan, yeah. And um, Michigan won that game, and then the next year he goes on wins the Rose Bowl, I, I believe, and then gets drafted. Who but, who, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Yeah, I'm like that's the, the only Tom Brady game I've ever seen live, and then he was a junior in college. Did he even start that game? Because I knew he was splitting time. Yeah, he started. Him. They had that. They had a big ass running back back then. He was more of a draft prospect than Tom Brady was. Uh, was it Horde? I think his name was Horde. I'm not too sure what his I name. Forget was. his name. Leroy Horde. No, I don't I, think it's Leroy Horde. Yeah, I know it's not Leroy Horde. I'm just being. Nah, oh, David Michelson. What's up, David? Thanks for What's joining up, us, David Skull. 
What's up, man? All right, so let's start off with this. Give us your quick rundown. We did a show here, but for those who didn't catch it, give us a quick rundown of what you thought of the uh, uh, hiring of the defensive coordinator, Brian Fuentes here. You like it? You love it? Do you want more of it? What you got? Ooh, I love it, man. That was my first choice. I don't know about you guys. When I seen that Brian Flores was a possibility, I said, do not let him leave the building. Then, you know, some other names started creeping in. Sean Desai, uh, Evero, which, where did Ever- Evero ended up going to Carolina? Panthers. Yeah, Carolina. Yeah. I endorsed him. You and endorsed- he didn't even interview with us. And I said, fuck him. <laughs> You dissing you you didn't even want Flores Dave. Let's call it real. No, I was oh, you didn't want well, Flores a, Dave? So yeah, um, I actually initially wanted him. I did that on a I talked about that on a video as him being a one of the choices, one of the top choices mm-hmm. with GG Sports and those guys on school experience. And then I did a then I went and like looked at the stats, realized he's never actually been named a defensive coordinator, but um wow. and then his uh defenses at Miami were thirty second. And I'm like, that's the first year of his, you know, yeah. taking over a team. And I'm like, this is going to be his first year taking over a team. Are we going to have the 32nd ranked right yes. defense? Then, <laughs> then after I uh, find out, you know, funny thing is, once you hire a guy, you start finding out more information about him. Mm-hmm. So everybody comes to the woodwork to do articles. And I realized, well, I know there was talk of it, but he actually was the play caller for the NFL, you know, the Super Bowl champion, yeah. um, Patriots, Patriots. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though he was a name coordinator. And then he didn't, he wasn't calling the defense. Um, he let his defensive coordinator do it his first year and his third year. And those were the two mm-hmm. mediocre years, bad and mediocre years. The good year was the, you know, elite, uh, you know, turnover defense that he had his second year. So that um, was the year he was he was calling the plays where the I don't see years. any um I didn't see any articles that says he wasn't mm, or someone okay. else was but I did see that his first year and his last year um so I was th- that's why I was hesitant about him I was like you know that this is this was under his watch 32nd ranked defense mm-hmm. I don't know I just uh so I did a video that hey, but I did say in that video that I at least know that he's going to be aggressive, and I'll take that over what we had last year. So I wasn't completely shitting on him. I was only you know voicing my concerns about hey, we had he had some kind of bad ranked defenses. Yeah, and, and can I mention something? Kind of a side note, but this still ties into this. We got to give credit to Quasi in this front office. Most when. Def- when yeah. we need a change at a specific, whether it be coaching staff or position, it's not a gradual change. Like we completely go completely opposite. When it was Mike Zimmer and we had the whole thing, and then Quasey was was granted the opportunity to to pick the next head coach, he picked the complete opposite of Mike Zimmer, a guy who's you know happy go lucky. He's gonna talk to players, and you know it's contributing to everybody together instead of Mike Zimmer being Mr. You know, grumpy guy and it's my way or the highway. And then you go to this defensive uh, coordinator position. Ed Donatel was, you know, the cool, happy guy, you know, laid back. We're going to just like his defense. We're going to be laid back and we're just going to come up and try and make a tackle and just real soft. And we completely go opposite of Ed Donatel and go Brian Flores who is 100% aggressive, who's going to get after the quarterback, who's going to blitz the majority of the time. So I, I like it. If if the front office sees we need to make a change at something and it needs to be drastic, they make that drastic change. They don't, uh, maybe we just need to switch it up a little bit. No, this defense needs to get better. L- let's go out there and get one of the top defensive coordinator prospects out there in Brian Flores. So I love the move. I love the aggressiveness of the move. I have a uh, David Michelson. I was not talking poop emoji about <laughs> Flores. I was not talking poop emoji. I was only concerned that was defenses, and I. But I, I just wasn't impressed with the group of defensive coordinators that we had, were choosing from. I was like, hey, at least go after a young guy that doesn't have like a bad track record. You know, someone you know aggressive. Uh, but I, I did say I would not cry if we got Brian Flores. So if that's talking poop emoji about him, then I guess I was talking poop emoji about him. 
Skull Mafia, what's up, man? What's up, Skull Mafia? And uh, who else just came in here? What's up, Raymond? Thanks for joining. Appreciate you guys. If y'all could hit the like button, if you don't already subscribe on all the Facebook pages, they are scrolling at the bottom. That is Purple and Skull Media. Who texted Purple. that? I did. <laughs> From Minnesota Sports Talk? Yeah, uh, you're signed up under me, man. <laughs> oh man! Now in the stream uh -oh. area, you can send it from everyone so that everyone. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. So when you're running it next time and you he's hit sabotaging him, your page, he's See, sabotaging you're, your page. I thought that was our first time. We, we, we don't, we don't talk about that stuff. Right? I'm gonna anything bad said today. I'm gonna blame it on uh, <laughs> Justin. I'm blame it on Justin. It's well, all you're gonna Justin. do that regardless. Uh, that, that's just standard operating. <laughs> I, I do. I do. I don't know why we're going, but anybody, thanks for hitting the like buttons. Uh, we are now also simulcasting on the Purple and Skull Media Facebook page. So if you do Woo. not already like on there as well. Um, hey, Felicia. No. What's up, Felicia? Thanks What's for joining Felicia? us. Always Let's get her up there. Thanks for joining. We appreciate you. Uh, Dave Matheson's also in the house. Thanks again, everybody, for joining. So having said all that, now for me, huh? Matheson. Michael, man, this font's really small. My eyes really bad. I should put my uh, bifocals back on. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, Damn Dave. It, Justin. There's too Damn many Daves. There's only been listening the forever. There's only been there's three Daves in the house right now. I start to get off. The piece. But having said that, no, I, I think this was the best move for this team for this year. And, and anybody who's concerned about, well, he might be a one and done. So what? If he's a one and done, that means our defense is light years better than it was before. Yeah. So we should be happy with such things. We worry. We got to take the, what the Vikings do. They play for one year at a time. And if you're going to play for three years, then yeah, Flores wasn't maybe the best choice from a long term perspective. But who the heck knows? You know, this guy's been trying to get jobs. Who knows if he even gets one? Even we could have the number one ranked defense, and he still might not leave because you know he's kind of getting blackballed right now. So yeah. to me, you take the best option available to you, and you roll with there if that's the the way you're going to proceed with the team here. I so. think if anybody's overcome being. You know, that stigma of being blackballed, it is a been to him. Um, yeah. Because he didn't drag it out in the media. He's kept quiet about it. He's not making mm -hmm. he's not making it a crutch. I think that is brought, you know, bought him a lot of goodwill. And people were still looking at him as a head coach. So, um, you know, I don't know necessarily of pulling your name out of the hat for and taking a D coordinator job rather than mm -hmm. sticking with it will cost him. But I thought it was going to be a crazy fit after he tried to get rid of Tua Tonga Valoa, if I say that right, <laughs> and then go to go to the Cardinals and get told to f off on the sidelines by his other by that quarterback. He I didn't wasn't find, having that. I didn't no. think that would have been an appealing situation for him. Nope. And I think he did the right move and went to our team, where again he he was a you know a fan from afar, especially yeah. his kids. So yes. I think it was a good fit for him. And he could, if he could show he turned another defense around, um, then great. Yeah, and I'm sure Mike Tomlin probably put in a good word for for Minnesota as well with him being a oh, uh, and, what was he the linebackers coach? Yeah, and Kevin O'Connell's, you know, they didn't they weren't like best buddies or anything, but they thought yeah. well of each other from their time in New England. So that that little connection, man, that little connection yeah, go a long way. Yeah, it has. So no, I'm I'm ecstatic for the hire, man. Um, just like you said, if he if he goes off and gets a head coaching job next year, that means our defense made at least somewhat of a major improvement. And if our defense makes that major improvement next next season, I don't see why we're not a playoff team again and have the possibility of going, you know, making a little run in the playoffs. Um, so yeah, man, I, I think we're heading in the right direction. We have the right guy, um, and it's an attitude thing. I, I don't yeah. think it's necessarily just schematic-wise, which it, it is schematic-wise because we want to be aggressive as far as blitzing and everything, but I think it's that aggressive mindset. Our, our defense has kind of been lacking in identity. We had a little bit of attitude or maybe a little bit of – it was more like fun from our defense last year. We didn't necessarily have an attitude or any nastiness in our defense. It was more of – we're just out here having fun, and if we can get a, a turnover from time to time, that's cool. <laughs> so what completely so I, what completely flipped me three sixty and Flores is after the press conference, and I think it was maybe another interview. I don't know, but these two basically these two statements. Someone asked him, "Is it three four or four three? And he says, "Who are we playing?" Yeah, and that was then, the press conference. And, yep. Yeah, that's amazing. And then the other thing was like, uh, you know, fitting the fitting the you know, the defense around the players, you know, you know, and being creative and, 
and being aggressive and, and all that. He said all the right things when you did not hear the right things come out of Donatel. He was like, uh, hey, we got a scheme. Let's, you know, it's, he wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't, you know, it was like, hey, this scheme works, man. You're going to love it. The, the <laughs> so thing is, is we, we all bought into it when, when Donatel <laughs> first got hired, though, which it's normal. It's normal for a fan base. He to was, buy, oh, he sounds so great and positive and, we're just all going to get along out there. And then we saw the product he actually put out there. The worst thing was before the playoff game, he had the nerve to go out there. Was it him or Patrick Peterson and say, you're going to like what you see out of it this. It was him. I, I heard weekend. it from him. <laughs> and, it actually, and the reason why I think Patrick Peterson's gone is because he likes that style of defense. Yeah. Because he, he was, doesn't have the so capability I produce on him. He produces. You can't be mad at him for it, though. He produces in that defense. He produced for us. Right. He wasn't. He wasn't terrible, but I mean, he had a terrible game against the Giants, obviously. But he wasn't. He wasn't bad in this scheme. So I, you can kind of understand why he would be defending Donatel. But the the numbers are right in front of you. Like, well, I think he wrote it. Yeah, I think he wrote the wrote it on the wall, basically. That hey, I'm probably gonna be gone now because yeah, Flores is hired, and he's we're gonna we're gonna go man a lot. Mm-hmm. You know. You can't really blame the guy. I mean, he's a borderline Hall of Famer playing. Man oh, he's not borderline. Press. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer for sure. I'm, yeah, no I'm just keeping it. it. I'm just keeping my mind. But you're being cautious on. I'm that being one. cautious. <laughs> you know, people say, "Oh, you said it," but you know, he doesn't have the skill set he had five years ago. And this skill set for yeah. Donatel, he was probably the one that benefited the most from. I mean, it only came at the cost of I don't know Danielle Hunter and Harrison Smith and a bunch of other guys. But having said that, yeah, no, there's absolutely no doubt about it that he is the one that is going to benefit the least uh, from Donatel's system being gone. And frankly, as much as we liked him and it was a great two years, he does provide a lot of veteran leadership. I just don't see any way that he's back with this team next year. Do you guys think I'm on something or on to something by saying that? Do you think there's any chance Patrick Peterson is back or no? No, I, I don't. There's I a think... chance. I mean, only if he's sitting out there and we don't get anybody. And I think that's how we got on our that, team last year. Mm-hmm. But that was coming off a bad season. Yeah. So that, I'm like, he's, he's gonna want. He's gonna want to get paid. He's gonna want one last paycheck before. He I don't retires. think he lasts long enough. Uh, long enough for us to be settling on him like we had right. what we did last year. Yeah, right. I'd ra- I'd rather place my money somewhere else than a younger, you know, more versatile quarterback. Right. That's actually gonna be better for this scheme. So I love I love P two. It was fun while he was here, but I yeah I don't I do, think I do he think was he was a he taught the young guys. I think yeah. he was a leader yes. to the young guys, and I think that's the same way with Mar- uh, Harrison Smith. Yeah. And it would be sad to see him go in that. And the whole just the the lore of him saying we only need five touchdowns. Yeah, you know that's some Viking <laughs> shit right there that I'm gonna hold that's on to goal. for a while. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You, you can hear him on the sidelines credit. doing. I only need four. <laughs> what's nah, up like i said we love p2 man we love p2 what's up john b thanks for joining us very much appreciate you and uh, to, you know what we we're going to get to this later at some point but let's just go ahead to now dalvin tomlinson officially is a free agent as of today his contract has voided vikings got a seven and a half million dollar salary cap hit i'll just put it out there what are your thoughts on dalvin tomlinson i'll start with you <laughs> sk do you think that he's another guy where we hope maybe sticking around because the bottom line is whatever they sign him for they're already into him for seven and a half million do you think yep. it's worth getting into trying to re-sign him to try to recover some of that sunk cost or that it's just time to move on in a different I, direction no I, I think he's back i think he's back it's just because we have too much money tied into mm-hmm. him regardless so mm-hmm. i think he's back so my thought process there and you sk what you think about this is that <laughs> all right we got seven and a half million but then we got to go to pay him and what's he worth 10 million 11 million yeah. so isn't that is isn't that an 18 million dollar player then well, so if you th- sign him to um, a multi-year deal, you could structure it. So now we got him for a couple years. Yeah, it would at eleven million. Yeah, if you if you're gonna bring but him back, year, you absolutely have to do it for at least two years to spread that cap hit out. You're right. If they so, sign yeah, him to yeah. a one-year deal, then you, they'd be double dipping. Yes. So my thought process is, hey, a cheaper option would try to replace a guy like that in the draft. You know, get yeah. a young guy um, in the draft. Plus, he was playing D end. And we drafted a DN, a 3-4 DN last year. Who knows what he's going to be like? Obviously, Dalvin's a a better choice. But if Dalvin goes sign someone somewhere else for $10 million, $11 million, Mm -hmm. you know, two-year contract, isn't that a third-round pick coming our way? 
So we would get uh, we go draft so, a young yeah. guy to replace him, and then we go get a third round pick. Well, it depends yeah. on how many free agents we sign. So that's a you know the formula is is that you get players for every one that you lose, but then you know that mm. number gets subtracted by the ones but, that you sign. Again, it's that the type of, of but it's the quality too. Right. Like yeah. is it like we sign a four million dollar guy that might not count against us, like losing an eleven million dollar guy, right? So it, there's like a scale, right? This is where I pretend to not. And this is where I don't know the exact. You know, this is equation. Justin's game. This is just. I know game about. Right uh, I know a decent amount about the cap, <laughs> but I don't know the formulas as to how they calculate co- compensatory well, picks. Where mm-hmm. there's I'm not some gonna, formula. You're right. You're so right. I sign this guy for one million, but I lose this guy for ten million, and they cancel out. No, I don't think it's like that. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's the value of the player is you know. And I think the time that you get him too. Right. That's another good point. So, no, but to your to, to your overarching point, yeah, if if the formula works out that way and you don't resign him, then, yes, you could theoretically get a compensatory pick for him. Uh, the so, following you season. know, losing a Peterson, losing, a, you know, Dalvin, those that's going to help us in that category big time, well, I think. Now, now you said you you'd replace him in the draft or you'd replace him in free agency. Well, draft, but we also got a guy we drafted last year. We haven't, you know fully checked out yet um so i don't know i don't know so it's either way you're saying probably not dave is what you're saying probably not probably not um i could see us resign them if we really like him but a uh, flores has got to like him and i don't know i think he's more of a i think he wants to collapse a pocket and i don't think we were compl- collapsing the pocket i think our biggest weakness was our three interior defensive linemen and getting into the quarterback I think that's yeah. our biggest. That was our biggest weakness this year because our cornerbacks and our safeties can't hold it forever, and I think a lot of that confusion in back there was uh, led to by Donatel and using players that are like Evans isn't a a zone cornerback. He I, I, with all the videos I saw him in college, he was playing press the whole time. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I just I just didn't see him using the guys that they were the way they're supposed to be using back there. So they couldn't they couldn't cover for that long. And they, they have, you know, you know, D- Danny Dimes has all freaking day to throw, you know, because we can't collapse a quarterback. And how many times did you see almost misses by Zadarius and yeah. because the quarterback could step Just up? Just step up. Yeah. All he had to do is step it. up. Yeah. yeah. And no, no one was right. there to push the pocket. And that's why I think whatever we can do to get that pocket to collapse. And uh, I don't know. Dalvin was doing that. I think the guy we lost in preseason was doing that. What was his name? McKenzie? McKenzie? Oh, uh, is that the dude we let go, right? We can, Well, we, we put him on we, IR, but um, for the year, oh, we released him. Injury yeah, designation. Injury. Yeah, injury designation. Uh, Which means he's a free agent, but he's older. So, yeah. But he, I mean, he looked promising, you know? Can you find a diamond <laughs> like that? Like we found a maybe a, a, a ruby and, you know, Shelly and a Ruby and Tonga. What what's uh what's <laughs> Duran Diamond? What's Duran Payne's market value right now? Uh probably around twelve. I'll look it up. <clears throat> around twelve? I'm guessing somewhere in there. Mm. That's the guy. If you could get Duran Payne. <laughs> okay, according to Spo Track, Payne's projected mark. Oh, I was a little light there. Uh 19. <laughs> little lights. 19 million. Yeah, so yeah. I think he's out. gonna price himself out of our, our ability with what we got going on. I, but that would be a home run sign if you could get that guy. But well, to your point, Dave, about the weaknesses mm-hmm. on this team, it was the interior defensive line and the interior offensive line. If if you could fix those two things amongst anything else, the rest of your team. Is going to follow suits on that, but go ahead, SK. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I was just saying, um, not like you can check him off the list. He ain't coming to Minnesota. Yeah, no, he's gone. <laughs> um, but like he's an gone. option, I was thinking like a nose tackle because I think that was the biggest area need. Um, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, Harrison Phillips isn't going to collapse a pocket anytime soon. I think he's a, I think he's a workman like guy that mm-hmm. you know, hey, I'll take on the double team so other guy mm-hmm. can get a tackle. But he's not going after the quarterback. Um, yeah. So I went like at a Keanu Benton. I, was, um, I think uh, Dante from East Coast Gridiron said he was getting worked in the Senior Bowl uh, practices, but game mm. tape kind of told me a little bit different. Yeah, game tape's uh, different. Uh, so I don't know. I I see a guy like that being available in the, some cases third round. 
Uh, I don't think he lasts that long because I think uh, that nose tackle, it's not deep. Um, so mm -hmm. it, I don't know. This guy gets out of out of range for us because we don't have a second round pick. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 you know, I like a guy that can uh, get after the quarterback up, you know, up the middle. And you know, we did we played around with that, putting like a, you know, our 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 DNs in a four three in at the uh, at the uh, you know tackle position. You know, we saw. We saw that under Zimmer. You know, who knows? Maybe we could just mix guys and move them in third down position. I think Flores can be get real creative with that. Mm -hmm. But hey, I think the biggest need is some guy sitting at nose tackle and just you know collapsing the pocket. That's well, well, look look at the majority of the playoff teams in this year's playoffs. They mm -hmm. all have a nose tackle or defensive tackle. That is dominant. That can get pressure on the quarterback. You look at the two Super Bowl teams. They got Fletcher. Cott. That I mean, Philadelphia had multiple. He's, a, he's available. Well, he's a little Crazy. too old. I think he might. <laughs> I think he might I'll retire for a year, man. I think he, he's either retiring or going back to Philly. I don't think Probably. he'll play for anybody else. Um, he's kind of on that Jason Kelsey thing. Look, I'm either retiring or I'm playing for the Eagles. Um, but I just think. You need if you if you're a contender if you want to go down this route of of being a contender and wh what was the the quote that that Kevin O'Connell said a championship standard standard yeah so yeah. to be one of those championship standard teams the collaborative going, championship standard I'm just I'm just <laughs> these big words these big words the triangle uh, of collaboration yeah. triangle of collaboration <laughs> you're going to need a very good defensive tackle or nose tackle so. I mean, we can rattle off all the playoff teams. And, I mean, outside of San Francisco, San Francisco didn't have a dominant defense set, but they had Ken Law, right? Who's actually yeah. really good. So I get I got a comment on AJ here. Um, AJ, I literally yeah, just did AJ. a video on Trenton Simpson this morning. So yeah, check it out. That. Minnesota Sports Talk. Go check it out. Yeah, there's a three-minute highlight tape in there, too. I, I really like him. I think it's not that I like him. I think I think uh, Brian Flores would like him, and yes. I have seen him be his latest forty fifth or something like that. I don't know. We'll find out. So, are are we all sold that Eric Kendricks is is more than likely gone? No, <clears throat> not as no. much as I was. Not this guy, <laughs> not as much as I was. I'll say that real quick. Let me get some shouts. Ron, thanks for joining. Appreciate you. He, <clears throat> I'm gonna <clears throat> excuse me. Whoa, whoa, Get whoa. back to your question. Just on it, <laughs> Don't die on this, Justin. I know, right? Bandino, what's up? Thanks for joining as always here. Um, I, I agree that I had I had Kendricks as being 95% gone until they hired Flores. Kelly and hired Flores. My thought process is maybe with Kendricks, yeah, he definitely lost a step. We all nobody's mm -hmm. gonna deny that. But maybe he lost a step and a half because he took the responsibility from Anthony Barr of having to call the defensive signals in from the defensive coordinator and had the responsibility of making sure everybody was lining up right. And maybe that slowed him down just a little bit. I could see Flores saying, you know what? I could still get something out of this guy. Now, having said that, all due respect, and again, I'm not talking about taking money out of players' pocketbooks, but his cap number is going to have to be reworked on some level one way or the other because we got to make some we got to make some salary cap space somewhere. And unfortunately for Eric Kendricks, he's the the one who's got the most that can be saved with the littlest amount of dead cap hit. But no, I would say that now I'm going to put the chances of him being back at about 30, 35%. I think I'm not saying that I think it's a majority overwhelming that he'll be back, but I think there's a better chance now than there was before. Circling back to, uh, to Ron's question here. Was it the players or the D scheme? And my answer is yes. As in, <laughs> as in it was both. both. Okay. We want to make Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman, the big bad wolves and uh, you know, all that good stuff here, but let's not pretend that it was only the scheme and let's not pretend it was only the players. I think it, yeah, I think it has to be a little bit of both. What do you guys say on that one? Yeah, I'd I am leaning both. heavily towards the scheme and yeah. uh, I'm going to use Kendricks as an example. Hmm. All right. Okay. Um, he's had his two best years in tackles. I know tackles would overrated stat. No, and fucking it's one of the most important things in defense. <laughs> two years in a row, I have the two highest. Um, two highest tackle um, numbers in his career. Last year, he only did it in 15 games, and that was his best. Mm. 2020, he was going into the season, he was ranked 83rd best NFL player by his peers. 2021, going into the season, ranked 70th. Mid-season, PFF ranked him uh, all-pro PFF. 
mid-season. So this year he went to crap. Just all of a yeah. sudden fell off the mountain. He was well, he, trending he's up. He's an age cliff now. He, 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 he went Pro Bowl in 2018. All pro. All pro. 2020, 80th third best player in the league. 70th best player in the league. All pro midseason. Went to crap. I don't. I don't see that. I just don't see that happen, and I don't think uh, Brian Flores sees that happening either. So it sounds like we can get a lot back in in a trade. If you ask yeah, me. we should get a second round pick for him, right? But I, I do agree with Justin. We can't do it at eleven million. No, that's the key no. to me. If Eric can <laughs> be brought back, we got leverage now. I think we got I'm leverage. Happy. I'm happy with him coming back at a reasonable number because at that Absolutely. point, then everybody agrees. Okay, I'll take a little bit less if I'm Eric Kendricks, but I'm going to be in a system where I can flourish again and I can make it up the year after that. I, I, I'm not totally disagreeing with what you're saying, Dave. I don't know that it was that simple, but I, I agree that there were a lot of determining factors that I don't think it was just a, hey, Eric Kendricks. Just in, in like Harrison the Smith, he was in the Pro Bowl last year, uh, like almost mm-hmm. a 90 PFF grade, and now he's crap in one season. Yeah. I mean, players do fall off the map, but. Mm-hmm. God, well, Harrison you know? Smith's a different one. Harrison Smith is, hey, I do any, I, I do, <clears throat> I'm not going to sell the farm to him and like totally miss you. He's, he's grandfathered he's in. Yes, I, he's a guy that I bring back. He's a guy that I find. Yeah. Really good oh yeah. Well, you, you can't get rid of that guy because the yeah. cap. I mean, we're going to eat. We're going to. It's bad cap situation for us. We need to at least play him one more year. We can't move him at all or do anything with no. him. And no, he's the guy I am most excited to see in the in the forest. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah I love yeah. to see him go out like this. Oh. Yeah, and I'm also excited to see Lewis Seen. Let's not forget yes. oh, the I'm... type the type of player Lewis Seen is. He's the guy that's gonna fly around and put his pads on somebody. Uh, so Samoa, this Lewis Seen. Oh my god! And he he's saying it, Booth by name. So by name. Exactly. these are all guys that fly to the ball. It's the attitude. It's the attitude of your defense. Our defense is starting to or it's going to start to mold an attitude and a certain way of playing that we haven't seen in a long long time we've always had smart players that just know where to be that can make good plays on the ball but we've never had those players or it's been a long time since we've had those players that have that attitude like i'm gonna put my helmet on you and you're gonna feel it when you come over the middle and i know it's kind of hard to do that nowadays in the nfl with the rules and everything but th- you can still strike fear into the opposing team. Our defense is not striking fear into the. Yeah, that's, we haven't seen murder offense. scene in a while. Haven't seen murder <laughs> scene. AJ in a murder while. scene. We haven't heard that in a while, man. Uh, yeah. Well, we we got a new murder scene, but scene spelled C I N E. Not to plug another show, but a S K Wobcast 2.0. He did a video on uh-huh. if we just replace some of the younger players, or, or made these replacements like putting the Metellus over. Um, you know, in safety them. and, uh, you know, Asamoa, and they mm-hmm. use the PFF grades and to see the improvements throughout the defense. If you take PFF, you know, it's a, it's a rating and you got to yeah. say, Hey, it's rated against, you know, how many players. So, you yeah, know, if you're, yeah. if you're got a higher grade, then you're probably at least in the, t- at least in the top half. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. you, you know, you got to take it as a measuring stick of some kind. But you could see where he took the 11 starters and then put these younger guys in with their grades and how much better the defense looked on paper. Um, so, you know, we just put it to practice and see what happens. Now, now, I think we can all agree. We're not saying we put these younger guys in on this defense and we become this dominant great defense. No. no. We're, saying, we're saying you put these young guys in and let them fly around. This is going to be a very exciting defense to watch, whether they're giving up. 30 points here and there, or whether they're stopping somebody for 13 points in a game here and there, it, they're going to be fun to watch. They're going to be very, yeah. very fun to watch. I think they're going to cause a lot of turnovers and I think they're going to, you know, I think they're going to get burnt deep a lot. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> I'll <laughs> say, well, let me get some shouts in here. Mary, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you. Hope you're better. Uh, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Flores will have something to say. Uh, the scheme of the players are present. And, and first off, again, greatest handle of all time. My worth is opinion. Thanks for joining us. It's not that they're crabs, that they're too expensive and slowing down. Yes, we agree worth it. What, what we're saying is that, that some of these players, if they could be renegotiated, like an Eric Hendricks could be renegotiated down to a serviceable number. They still have some stuff that comes in there, but to the point of 
where we're going with the finding the balance between the older players and the young players. It's I think not me saying, a, me saying the, uh, that all of a sudden Kendricks became crap. I was being over dramatic, but you no, I'm kidding, dude. <laughs> <laughs> What's up in the zone? Thanks for joining us. We very much appreciate you. And over. And by the way, if y'all could please go and subscribe to uh, purple and Skull media, that is the new uh, mothership that we will all be part of. That will be myself, Dave rap, GG. It's my Cassie vacation Dawson. home. It's Your not my mothership. <laughs> it's my vacation home. <laughs> if you could, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, hit the like buttons there and help us uh, help the channels out a little bit that way. Or if you're on uh, the Facebook or YouTube page, hit that like button, hit those shares buttons for us there. Uh, having said that, to your point, SK, this defense, one way or another, is going to be massively different than it yep. was last year. And it very well may give up more points than the quote unquote Ben Don't Break does, but it's mm -hmm. going to be exciting. It's going to be fa fa uh, fam and fam and feast. There's going to be games mm -hmm. where they're shutting people down, and there's going to be games where they're getting burned all over the place. But I don't see it being the death by 10,000 paper cuts that was the Ed Shell defense uh, from time to time. What's up, Andrew? Thanks for joining very well, much. Well, it, it's all about that. being situational, just like Kevin O'Connell says, yep. you know, in the in the what, what what's the what's the saying he was saying and when the moment is three, biggest. Four, four, three. No, 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 not in the oh, press conference, about, but when the mo when the moment is biggest, we play our best, whatever the hell his saying was. When the moment's the biggest, our biggest show, or some shit like that. But you look at these teams, yeah, yeah. Sit, sit being situational uh uh masters or whatever he calls it. You look at these teams, especially Kansas City Chiefs, and I know they're Super Bowl champions, and you, know, you can only compare the Super Bowl champions to so many teams in the league. But you look at their defense. Their defense isn't great, but when it comes down to it, when it's, okay, we're fighting for playoff position or it's playoff time, that defense comes to play. Chris Jones comes to play. Uh, uh, Frank Clark comes to play. So it's all about being situationally good in those positions so when the 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 spot is big you need a stop you get a stop and we've had times this year where we i think we did get a couple stops and big moments to where it's like okay this team just finds a way to win and is good in situational moments but the defense needs to improve drastically in that for this team to make any type of run and and be a playoff team next year I'm gonna get to end this old comment in a minute, but one more shout out here. Uh skull guys. Thanks, Pops. Appreciate your support as always. Love you, boss. Uh having said that, um, both Rap and I have talked about trying to trade for that Miami cornerback Xavier and Howard, but that might be difficult with having to get Miami to agree with it. This guy from the Steelers, what's the, oh Zoe, put the guy's name in there if I could, if you could please. Uh Sutton, uh, isn't it Sutton? Flores? No, not Flores. S Sutton, yes, yeah, Sutton. Sutton. He's a slot cornerback. I think if you can get him. Resign Duke Shelley and maybe get one more veteran and allow guys like Booth, allow guys like a Caleb Evans to be those depth pieces. You're in business defensively in the secondary. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much that guy will cost. In fact, maybe I'll just look him up and see what his Booth, Booth's got to stay healthy, though. That, that's Booth, the only yes. thing with Booth. It's health. It's health. And that's huge. Your best ability you, is your availability. What do you think about Booth? You know, other than if he was if he was to stay healthy, what do you think about Booth? I mean, it's it's kind of hard to to really judge him because we didn't get enough looks at him last year. Like, what was I your think, evaluation? He's coming out of a college. Like, I, when no, I loved him. it. If I, I remember doing mock drafts, he was my guy. Yeah, I remember doing mock drafts and us grabbing him at the what was it? The tw I think we had the twenty third pick last season. Or no, no, a twelfth pick. I'm we sorry, twelve. Yeah, yeah I was, we, we, if we traded we, down, I was thinking in the twenties. Exactly. that I would take him in the twenties. Exactly. We did we did our, our mock draft on the the main page last year and we traded back and we ended up drafting Andrew Booth at like twenty eighth or twenty seventh or something like that. So for us to grab him in the second round when I felt like he was a first round guy, oh, just off that. his production, just what he did at Clemson and just the flashes that he showed, I I loved that pick. Even if we grabbed him in the first round, if those picks were switched or we grabbed Andrew Booth first and came back and grabbed Scene uh, later on in that second round, that would have been great too. But I loved Andrew Booth coming out. It's it's just so hard to look past the injury thing. I can't count on you. Yeah. So I, I don't even I don't even necessarily bring up his name because if I if I can't have you on the field, I'm not gonna put you on my depth chart. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I mean, the Vikings have had a history of first round picks getting hurt, you know, in mm -hmm. second round in this case. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like a Robert Sorry. Smith, man, he 
he blossomed, you know, and he got, Very true. you know, our Chad Greenway. Uh, I was going to say Greenway, you know, yeah. he, that was, uh, you know, that was ACL, wasn't it? And he, yeah. he, now he's going to be a ring honor easily ring yeah. honor player. Yep. So there's, there's been a history of players. Now here's what, here's what I always thought when people get into their prime, honestly, injuries start trying to go away after mm -hmm. they know how to take care of their bodies they get more comfortable. They, the, they start listening to you know the trainers the the you know the the strength and conditioning all that yeah. changes in the pros and again mm -hmm. you know you just know better about your body so I, I can see a player overcoming something like this what was his in, what 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 was his injury that finally you know um, he was, was it, it a a groin or a no knee? it was a meniscus it was a meniscus meniscus that's yeah, right. yeah, it was a meniscus. yeah, yeah. knee yeah so it wasn't too major meniscus is pretty common believe it or not in, but people are down on this draft class but when you think about it we got our starting right guard who i think is promising yeah a we lot a lot it. of people are down on ingram too he, yeah. he was a rookie man he's a rookie uh, give, give and he, i think he i think yeah he started playing pretty solid at the end of the year mm -hmm. and i think there was a couple of games where he got bad rap only because he stepped on cousin's foot yeah and then he got um he got blown up on a play where the guy had a huge mm -hmm. jump off the ball at the goal line uh, you know, just there was situation. It was like, um, is a rookie. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. but but then you got uh, Asamoah. I think he's gonna be starter for years. Oh, yeah, you got absolutely. Stevens. I think he's. I think he was our best corner, uh, outside of Peterson this yeah. year. Um, uh, Shelly. Yeah. I would have to give that one to Shelly. I was gonna say, yeah. Well, okay. okay. To that to for, you know, you, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you dog, that. So, we, dog, love Shelly. But we liked Evans, right? We liked yeah, 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 when Evans was in there. Absolutely. So I, you know, and that was the fourth round, right? Yep. And then yeah, uh, what? And who am I missing here? I think uh, I think there was another guy that played a lot. Oh no, no, it's not. So and then I'm really high on Ty Chandler and Jalen Naylor. Yeah. And, well, and they yeah. just and they just haven't got their chance yet because they're you know behind some people. Don't get me started on the running back position. No, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I, I don't know. People are. I don't know. I cannot get anybody to jump on my Ty Chandler train. No. To start on the Naylor train. I, I will jump on the Naylor before I jump on the Chandler. Uh, if I'm going to go down one of those two roads, dude, you look I, I'm go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go I, would, ahead. I was going to say, dude, you look good in Carolina, man. You yeah, look good no, in Carolina. You're right. All right, let me get some shouts in here. I'm getting behind on this. Felicia, I see your question. I got that one star for a minute here, but we're going to finish up. Oh, we get some guys. special teams. We can get some special teams mixed yeah, in. There we I, go. I, uh, what do you guys think of uh, Devin Bush uh, in the zone that posted that question here? What do you guys think of him? Uh, I, I heard he's slowing down. I got to do my own research, but just things I've heard about Devin Bush is that he's on the back end of his, his career. So I, I think I'll pass on Devin Bush. You interested at all, Dave, or no? Ah, uh, I just <laughs> you take it away. All right, fair enough. Pass. <laughs> pass. All right. Don't know Dave, enough. Don't know Dave, enough. Dave Thibodeau, thanks for joining us. You know, I think that's the fourth Dave I've seen in here, and I've already met yeah, a lot of Dave's Dave. everywhere I go. Everywhere we're surrounded by Dave. Dave's here tonight. So thanks everybody for joining us. If you haven't already Dave. done so, hit that like button, hit that share button, and subscribe to the channels if you could. All right, so we'll get to that Felicia's comment here. Yo, we're taking your questions, guys. We had, questions, nothing, put we had no idea chat. what we we're gonna talk about. No, <laughs> said, question. We'll see what happens. And you guys have more than delivered here, but Felicia's got a good question. What do you think about Greg Joseph? Thank you. <laughs> They, I'll let Dave go ahead first. I'm I'm all about continuity, and we've had a problem ever since Cluey got let go as our holder yeah. and punter, and is has been a year by year change almost every year. And I I honestly I think you know like we I think we found the solution last year and in, in the season, and then we got rid of our punter. And what happens? Inconsistency again. And uh, I give my, it sucks, but I think we got to go into the year with all three of them and give them another shot. I don't think all we're right. getting rid of our punter. He was amazing. No, no, no. You no. just got to be better at hold. I think you just got to have better continuity at holding uh, and, you know, and everything. So that's my point on it is you know, it's continuity thing more than anything. And uh, what, what did uh, Greg Coleman say? Same thing, right, Justin? Yes. 
it's funny. I actually went back and listened to that, that earlier today about him talking about, hey, must keep your special teams consistent. So I I guess I would sign him to a one-year deal. I don't know that I'm ready to commit to him long-term as of yet. Yeah, so let's, let's, not let's, long-term. I'll give him a one-year deal. That is probably what I, where I would top out at. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with keeping him around. I'm also not against going out there and grabbing another kicker. Look, you see that helmet. There's a kicker coming out of Michigan. His name is Jake Moody, okay? So if you want to spend a seventh round pick on a on a new kicker and grab Jake Moody, be my guest. I don't think we have a seventh round, do we? Do we not have a seventh round here? Oh we my god. Is it's this the first seven. time? When's the last time we didn't have a seventh round pick? Uh, I when think 2005, first? maybe. We'll probably have three at the end of this. Let me, let me look. I don't think I think we got a six, but not a seventh. You might be uh, right. Or no, yeah. is it? Is it the fourth or fifth that we don't have? No, that's right. We got a first, third. We got Detroit's fourth. We got our fifth, and we got the comp in the fifth. So we don't have a five, six or a seven. Oh, so wow. We'll have to be making some moves there. Uh, We're but... trading back in the first. I'll, I'll I, the first. I'll I almost, almost guarantee we guarantee. trade back in the first. Yeah, we'll unless some the first. godly. What do you Falls think about, um, a, a, you know, the whole idea of getting that number two? Like, we don't need a receiver, but we didn't need Randy Moss either, yeah. right? Um. So, what do you think of like a a Jackson Najigba, you know, falling to us at twenty three? Do you think that's a guy that? I mean, he's not Randy Moss, but I think he's a, I think he's a stud. Here, here's what I do. I wouldn't be opposed to drafting a wide receiver, Me neither. but I also know how valuable the wide receiver position is in the NFL nowadays, and. How you if you can get a very good wide receiver on a rookie contract on a five year, that's very valuable. So I look and I say, okay, look, I can draft this receiver right here, but I also know I'm gonna have a lot of trade offers. Guys that are coming early second rounds trying to jump up and grab another receiver, and they'll give up a lot of draft capital for that. Which last year we should have got. I'm not even gonna talk about last year's trade back 20 picks <laughs> and not getting a first round pick back from the lions even Thank though it you. wouldn't even though it wouldn't have been a top 10 pick this year it would have been what 18 or something 18 like that. i believe yeah so it, it wouldn't I th- have been I thought the same thing i thought we were getting a first round back i did too i said oh my god we're getting a first round pick back we're gonna draft we got a what next year <laughs> so so no we didn't get a second we got a third oh what my god. and we so gave I- up our own second too in that deal yeah yeah, let's, not, let, let's not let's not talk about that. Let's not no, talk. It's a new draft. It's a new year. It's a new year. It's a new year. But I, I look at the trade offers and say, if I'm able to trade out of this first round and possibly pick up a first round pick in next year's draft mm-hmm. and set you up for the future, whether that be the quarterback position, whether that be a, a, a top defensive tackle that you want to grab, a, a, a pass rusher, whatever that is, it puts you in prime position in next year's draft. When things are a little bit more clear, this offseason is really murky. We don't know what's going to happen with this team. So I think next offseason, it's going to be a little more clear of what the Kirk Cousins situation is, what if Dalvin Cook's still around, everything else, the Justin Jefferson extension. So I think if you're able to trade out of the first round, grab an extra first round pick, I think that's best case scenario. But I wouldn't be opposed to to drafting a wide receiver there like a in big uh in big in big i think his name is jigba or whatever and jigba jackson jackson the jigba uh and then also uh addison out of usc i like addison he reminds yeah. me of Diggs a little bit what about flowers well, no. I, haven't, I haven't been able to look at flowers but i've he heard is, a lot of good things about him he is explosive yeah in a in a tough guy so I, I like him. I it, growing is, on me. Is the cat out of uh, TCU coming out this year? Or is he next year? Cornelius. I I've only I only Cornelius can talk about the guys I looked at so far. I okay, got I I'm, think, I'm I'm about seven deep. Yeah, I think I think he may <laughs> he may be coming out next year, but he's he's like the top wide receiver prospect out of TCU. He was their number one wide receiver, number one. Cornelius okay. Johnson, I think his name was. I'll look um, him up in a second. But yeah, he's like a Mike Williams big type of receiver, 50 50 ball guy. Hey, if you so, haven't hit the like button, please do. We're, we got like eight likes, and there's more than 80 in this chat. So yeah, I was let's about go. To say, let's go. On, hit that like button. Help us smash. Four of them are me. And four of them are me. <laughs> slap that, man. Stop playing. You better slap that like button. What's up, man. Zach? Thanks for joining us. Andrew, thanks for joining us as well. 
Andrew brings up a, uh, a, a good question. Who's the first player to get extended to help us with the cap? I'm down on Ingram, hoping he was better this year. I, 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 let me address the Ingram part. I think that we're so um, scarred by this interior offensive line, whether it be guards or centers, that we put a little bit too high of expectations on guys coming mm-hmm. in right away to the point that you made earlier. SK, the guy was a rookie. He was, he was okay. He was nothing spectacular, but he wasn't garbage either. So I, I, I definitely think we got to give him at least one more year before we completely uh, throw the pitchforks at him. But yeah, no. uh, to Andrew's question, uh, who do you think um, is the first player to get extended to help out with this cap situation? What do you think, Dave? Kirk. Think I think Kirk? it kind of all revolves around Kirk first, right? He's I, think get... it, I think it's Thielen. I was going to say Thielen. Oh, I mean, I, I would say Kirk too. Yeah. So I you, think that you think you extend. You think they're going to extend Thielen? I don't think they're going. No, I think yeah, I think they 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 stretch that money out. I don't think they want him to go. I would I wouldn't be opposed to him leaving because obviously the cap hit and everything. I love Thielen to death. Uh, every Minnesota Vikings fan loves Adam Thielen. But I just think um, as far as the front office goes, they don't want him to go. At the end, they want to keep him around, but they're not going to pay that price. So if they're able to stretch that out over maybe the next three years, maybe, you know, toss him a little signing bonus to Well, don't to you think that – don't you think, though, that you kind of know what you have to do after you, you uh, extend Kirk a year or two? God knows what they're going to do, but at least a year. Well, that that's going to show us – our true intentions on on Kirk, what this front office feels about Kirk, right? Not and that's why I'm saying they would lead with it, right? And yeah, then... yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense to go quarterback first. I, yeah. I just what the past two seasons we've kind of messed with Kirk's, tinkered with Kirk's contract, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, last year definitely. Last, last year, year, well, we definitely. we extend it. We um void years. We got void years on the contract. Okay, that's right. Void years. So. I don't know, man. Again, I wouldn't be opposed to extending Kirk Cousins. That's one of those things I'm not, I'm not opposed to. I, I mean, I'm think, saying it's most uh, – to me, everything I hear is most likely it's going to happen. I I, I just yeah, don't I, think Brian Flores you. signs with us and says, well, you know, we're, you know what's, what's the quarterback situation going to be? So, uh, obviously, we're not tra- – mm-hmm. you know, I don't think trading is an option. Some may think that. But, uh, you know, there was, you know, testing the waters last year. I don't necessarily think there's going to be any, you know, proactive testing the waters and trading Kirk this year because they signed a guy like Flores to win now. Yeah. I just don't see, hey, we signed Flores. Oh, by the way, we're going to get rid of our quarterback. But I think, and I just feel like that's who we're going to go with first because then I think the dominoes will fall uh, with uh, Justin Jefferson, you know, a Thielen. You know, we, he would, we would know what money we need. After yeah. that, well, that's what well, I'm thinking. I don't we're know. we're not we're not touching JJ's contract till next off season, right? Because we still got him under under rookie deal for one more year. But you he's eligible him. for extension yeah, according to the bargaining monk, agreement. Monk, monkey around with okay. the numbers that way. You could definitely do it that way. Uh, now, um, now, do you want to extend him after a season that he just had? Yes. I mean, I mean, every season he keeps getting better, so it's like you got to got to. But here's, here's why I say you do it right away. Nick Bosa in San Francisco and Justin Jefferson are each waiting for the other to sign to see, yeah. okay, now you've yeah. set the market for non-quarterbacks. If mm-hmm. the Vikings are smart, they get Justin Jefferson done so that when Nick Bosa tops that deal by another 5 to $10 million, they're not having yeah. Bosa sign first and having to top his deal. By get it out of the way. Million. So I don't know if you, I don't know if people look at, Hey, I'm going to be the, you know, I'm comparing a defensive player to an offensive player. No, they're comparing non-quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. That's what they're comparing. And both yeah. of those I guys think it, have but non, non-quarterbacks, but on offense, I think. Either way. Either right. way. Nick Bosa and Justin Jefferson are going to set the market for – Have you heard any- that like in a comparison conversation? Oh, I, I absolutely. Just, I, I, oh, I have I, You, yeah, you listen more than it. I do, so. They, they have talked about it. I, yeah, have, I it, it's a thing. Like, it's a thing – you know, between players, well, he's going to be the highest paid non To his point, which I agree with, is that, hey, well, they do it in major leagues all the time. They try to get these guys guaranteed money earlier in their career, and they'll sign, but they actually sign for less. Yeah. Um, they do that all the time in MLB. But, you know, if we wait a year, he just gets that more expensive, right? Right. So, yeah, there you have it. That's now, my two cents. Now, could we save money <laughs> against the cap this year if we do extend him? Because what, what's, so, what's his hit this year? 
you see you see other contracts like that where it's two years that are kind of that are very affordable and then it balloons. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because you know they'll work it out with signing bonus. And they just okay, keep kicking the can down. The he road. may get to raise yeah. these next two years, mm-hmm. but it's well, not going to be crazy. Bonus, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then and then how much of it is actually guaranteed? You know. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, JJ's cap number uh, coming up is only four point one seven five. So if you signed him to something, it would probably be a humongous, you know, signing bonus. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know that you're going to save a whole lot, but you know, to think in long term, you're going to want to get him done. Uh, Worthless brings up a very good point. The first move that they're going to make is just a simple. They're not necessarily going to extend Brian O'Neill. They're just going to restructure. Well, they'll just convert his money to signing bonus, and that'll free up. I think it was like seven or eight million right off. Now of that. Yeah. that he's a perfect example. Go look at his contract. Very little guaranteed money in his last couple of years of his contract. Mm. We have a complete out on Brian O'Neill for some ungodly reason. Hopefully, yeah, no, he's he completely that good. <laughs> extend that man. Yeah. Extend that man. Well, so, I think at the end oh, of his yeah, contract, right. he's like 31. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you could. There's a lot yeah. of move to, there's a lot of room to move uh, with Brian O'Neill there. But um, AJ, I think AJ's got it. You got to extend Garrett Bradbury, right? Hey look! <laughs> hey look! We we go. That's back another and- guy we're gonna get a draft pick for. We lose. What? We lose uh, Pearson. We lose Tom uh, Dalvin. We lose. Uh, you know Bradbury. Hopefully he signs that. You know evaluation where he's got like people say he's got ten, eleven million dollars in him. I'm like, Thank yeah, man. I hope so. We were all pray- we were all praying for Bradbury to come back about a month and a half, two months ago. So let let's stop it right now. I, I don't need no Bradbury slander because we're all praying for him to come back when we had Slopeman in there <laughs> snapping the ball for, for like the a season, <laughs> not to resign <laughs> for the season. Yes, not to resign necessarily. Look, I'm, I'm not saying resign him, but I would not stand for any Bradbury slander. Okay, he would. How how would he play in that playoff game, man? Hey, man, we we no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move. Um, my, my, would my you take uh, Would you take uh, Schmitz? Yeah, well, you that's know, a question. Uh, would you take round? Schmitz in the first round or early yeah. second? That's another guy. If we can trade out of the first round and grab in the second round, and possibly grab a first round pick in next year's draft, that would be the perfect scenario. Perfect scenario. God, that'd be crazy. Perfect scenario. So AJ, AJ thought you were funny, SK. Just so, just so we're all clear. Here. Hey, man, I'm I'm here telling jokes too. I'm here all night. That's your that's your side hustle is the late night comedian, right? But there yeah, you yeah. Know. Andrew brings up a good point that we've got a couple of years before we're going to have to give Christian Darrisaw some money as well. So that's also to be taken into account. Oh, well, Jesus, right? he's amazing. Oh, he's shout he's shout, he's shout out bad. shout out Rick Spillman. Shout out Rick Spillman. I know he doesn't get love drafted for trading Justin down Jefferson. and lucking out that he was still there. Yes. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, it works. Okay. You got to give him credit when it's, it actually hey, works. He knew the whole time, Dave. Yeah, you didn't know. Got a question <laughs> there, SK, because you were you were um, on YouTube. You were out there doing you know content before, way before me. Uh-huh. Um, did you? Well, I know when they were uh, that year. That's when Fields came out, right? And we were testing the waters on how. Yep. Was yep. it was it Spielman just honestly? getting the bears to pay more or was he serious? Like, Hey, I'm going to draft fields. I, I, I want to really know I how much if it's, serious. if it's cheap enough, I'll do it. Or as, or did it, it work like a charm and they, they caused the bears to overpay. I, I think he was serious because you look at how he speaks about Justin Fields to this day. Mm-hmm. And he's, he speaks very highly of Justin Fields. If you look at some of his articles for, I think he writes for the 33rd team or something like that. Yeah. Um, he speaks, he speaks highly. Over, yeah. yeah, he speaks highly of Justin Fields. And I think at that time, he was looking at it as he knew his job was in jeopardy, just kind of, of, of the way things were going. So he said, I need to make a big splash move. What, what, I need to do something here. If my guy, if Rashawn Slater isn't sitting here, then I got to go and, and, you know, get a big splash in a quarterback or whatever it may be. So um, I think he really was going to draft Justin Well, I also Fields. think he was – I also think he really liked the uh, the uh, guard, uh, the US, USC – The uh, – Bear Tucker. Tucker, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I think it, that was the guy he was – In New York. 
he was willing to draft him right there. I think it it just he got too much of a good uh, trade. Deal. Yeah, that he said, okay, let me move down. And yeah, thank goodness. Thank for that. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God, Darisol was still there. And who who the the guy the the guy the lineman that uh, Leatherwood. Alex Leatherwood is not even in the league anymore. <laughs> oh, Raiders. yeah, we oh my God. on that one to say the least. Oh, uh, let me get some in here. People before. that were talking about Leatherwood, man, I was like, yeah. no. Oh, no. real, real quick, Justin, just yeah. like you brought up earlier in the show, Dave, about the whole first rounders getting injured. Darisol dealt with the injury his rookie year too for right. the first half of that season. Let's not forget that. That's yep. very true. Yeah, I look at him. We got our boy Rap in the house. Thanks for joining us. Uh, oh, great. Here we go, Rap. Oh, yeah. You the already missed. I wonder what the next question is going to be. Yeah, I the know. great hate. We ain't going on. We ain't going on. <laughs> <laughs> Want to say hello and thank you to Angela. This is the first time I see. So thanks, Kylie, for joining us. I think we trade Carrick and get Gonzalez. If we could trade something for Kendricks and get something in return, yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely for that. I don't know. Do you guys think we could get anything for Eric Kendricks at this point coming off that year, or, or you think there's yeah. something? In there yeah, I think you can. Absolutely. We should be playing poker like no other if we're going to do something like that. Like, yeah. Flores should be saying his name every five seconds. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like God, man, I was I fucking looking at the tape. I love this guy. I love this guy. <laughs> you know, he should be saying that. Uh, you know, every chance he gets, if we're going to do something like that, I just we got to sell this. We would have to sell this. Yeah. I think I think uh, I think we're gonna try to keep him. Honestly, I think I'm I'm sixty forty. Sixty forty keep. I'm think no, I, not that I want to. I just think, think sixty forty. He's gonna keep. I'm fifty fifty myself because okay. I'm like, hey, how much was it, Donatel? Well, I, earlier in the show, I told you why I think it was more Donatel. Uh, but I'm also, you know, because of the contract, would he stay for less? You know. Greenway took took less money to stay with the Vikings. Would uh, Kendricks do it? Yeah, maybe. That's a good point. Kendricks is taking a lot of, of uh, pay cuts, though. Yeah. If if I pay mean, cuts, multiple. yeah, or multiple. restructures. I I know restructures. Took, you don't lose money. He you just a, get it in bonus. Yeah, he took a pay cut. I think the same year Everson Griffin took a pay cut to keep Anthony Barr around. I think Kendricks also took a pay cut earlier on. Was it in a pay the cut? Oh, yeah. I believe. So. I don't know. I believe. So. I don't pretend to know. I may be wrong. I may be. Wrong. I'd have to look it up. Yeah, most of them have been restructures though. Like Thielen's all been restructures. He's not made less Ooh. money. Yeah. You know and yeah. So let's talk about one more defensive player because his contract makes it rather interesting. And that's Daniel Hunter. Now, Mary agrees with me. Uh, well, well Mary, she's, she knows. Yes, she does. Um, that's my train <laughs> of thought. Oh, Daniel Hunter. So he's got a cap hit right now, 13 million. If they were to cut or trade him, his cap hit would balloon up to 18 million. So it would actually be uh, taking on more dead money if they traded or cut him. But the problem is, is that he's got one year left before two void years, and he's only going to be making $4.9 million in actual salary this year. So I seriously doubt he's going to want to play the last year of his contract on such a low number here. What do you do with Daniel Hunter? Do you re-sign him? Uh, do you try to get him for one or two more years, or do you want to just keep it? you want to sign him uh, for the long term? What are you guys thinking? Uh, SK, I'll keep, start with you. Keep that man, sign him for a couple more years. I, I believe Flora is going to use him the right way. So I think you got to sign him for at least the next year. Got to. Before got to. Flores, I was, uh, you know, leaning on the side to get the value in him because we were running a three, four. <clears throat> but yeah. now Flores is, uh, you know, when we, and uh, I think KOC is on the uh, same philosophy. I'm like, Hey, now, yeah, this makes sense to keep him. Um, does he want to stay on a defense like that? I think, I think if Flores t- tells him his vision, and how mm-hmm. he's going to be used, I think. Uh, I, and I think Flores, you know, um, more and more, I just hear. I think. I think players stayed away because all the controversy when he got, you know, the thing that happened mm-hmm. with Miami. But now yeah. they're coming out of the woodwork, supporting what kind of teacher he is, what kind of leader he is, and all that. And uh, so uh, I think if I think he can, I think Daniil need. And no offense to him, he's a quiet leader. But I think he also needs to be led, and I think a big, you know, a big, you know, you know, a personality. Not he's not big personality, but a, but a, you know, you know, what I'm saying. He's yeah, Flor is a leader, and he, I think yeah. he gets the best out of his players. And I think he could, he talk, he can talk Daniel into like, hey, this is my vision. Stick mm-hmm. with it. 
I'm going to put your head in the dirt. Yes. But you're right, Justin. I wouldn't play. You know, if I was him, I wouldn't play for $4.9 million. No. no. So if I'm the Vikings, I, I go to him and I bring Flores with and I said, all right, we're going to use you the right way. We're not going to have you drop into coverage. We're not going to have you stand up. We're going to let you do what you do. Sign him to a one or two year extension and then let's we'll see where things are at. And if, and if I think it'd take more, that, I think, think it'd so? take more than two. I'm thinking four uh-huh. minimum. Don't you think? Would you, as, as the Vikings, though, would you want to commit to him for four years? Well, you're still not giving them. Um, you're still not giving them guaranteed money in that third and four year, right? So it depends on what he asks for, what he's mean. Right. To, it all depends on because right. he's yeah. he's been fa- he's he's bit the bullet for us. Yeah, he's bit the bullet for us. So. Yeah, yeah, he bit yeah. the bullet a lot in 2018. So he's expected to get taken care of. Yes. So I think he's hurt. back. Yeah, I think he finds a way to get back. I agree with Andrews. If any one of the old guys play hardball, it's time to say goodbye. Yes, I would agree. Yeah, I would, I, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, I think I think Thielen's the one. I think that you have to play hardball. Yes, too. I I think that's one of the things that's been the themes on some of the last couple of shows and or videos that I've done is no more sacred cows, no more mm-hmm. bending over backwards for legacy players. And at some point, yeah. it's the name on the front of the jersey is more important than the name on the back. We love Adam Thielen. We want Adam Thielen to retire a Viking. That would be great. He can still retire off. a Viking. <laughs> yeah, he still can sign a one-day you know, contract and, at the end. Absolutely. Anybody that blames these players is crazy because it wasn't them that gave him these contracts. No, or, I'm not uh, saying it like that. I, I know you're not. I'm just I'm saying that for posterity's sake, for anybody listening. The people that like that went, you know, I'm sure there were some. I didn't look at, I don't look at comments on twitter a lot i just looking for maybe pe- what people say but not their comments but i heard people were going after thielen's wife yeah. and stuff and, yeah you know stupid. but hey thielen didn't didn't restructure his contract that's a team-led thing mm-hmm. it's it's usually written from what i understand written into their contract that anytime they're gonna still get their money they're just gonna get paid in a bonus and mm-hmm. but hey we're gonna put all this at the end that's that's spielman and, and uh, Brzezinski, that is not Thielen doing that. Well, yeah. it, it can be in it can be in either case. There are some. And how much did we pay is, him to start out with? We money. we nothing in the four year. He didn't, we didn't even play him till his fourth year, really. <laughs> you know, and like how much how much did we waste this guy's career? Mm. Not knowing what we had, he's had a well, good time. I'll, He's absolutely yes. And all I'm saying is, is that I'm not going to be <laughs> beholden to a player, regardless of who it is, regardless of what position it is, regardless of where they grew up. I'm not going to be beholden to making bad business decisions for the team. Oh, yeah. I'm on board with you. I just don't, right. there shouldn't be, not that you are, I, and not, and, and seeing it all, there should not be any animosity of him and what is his wife's tweeting out there. No, that, I mean, it, he did not create this mess. No. Yeah. <laughs> Leave Thank you, alone. Mary. I appreciate you. We all want a championship. It's time for a change. I'll say this. If if all they do this offseason is restructure and re-sign <clears> all <throat> their guys or all but one of their guys, to me, that's a mistake. There have to be mm-hmm. some hard decisions. I mean, I'm not saying get rid of every single older player or large contract player, that sort of thing. One, because I know the Vikings are just not going to do that. So I've given mm-hmm. up the ghost on – you know, maybe go about it a different way and maybe, you know, take a year where you not necessarily tank, but maybe take a step back. That ship has long sailed because that ship never Mm -hmm. even made it to Harbor since the wheels have owned this team. But what I am saying is I'm not just going to come out there and say, all right, let's re-sign and extend Harrison Smith for three more years. Let's do whatever we can to keep Adam Thielen and Eric Hendricks and Dalvin Cook. I'm saying that there's got to be some hard choices because at some point you got to move on from players this Bill Belichick said, sometimes you got to know when to get rid of them one year early versus sticking around, and now you're getting rid of them one year too late. And yep. so I, I think that's the key here. So we're going to wrap this up here in about five more minutes. So any more questions you want to throw into the chat here, throw them up here real quick. Uh, time to do some housekeeping items. It's been scrolling at the bottom. But if you don't already, please do subscribe to Purple and Scold Media. That is the new channel that SK is running that we will all mm-hmm. be a part of. That's myself at Purple and Gold for Days. Uh, Minnesota Sports Talk with Dave, Purple Pocket Podcast with Rap, GG Sports with the boys. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you haven't already hit the like buttons on all the channels, please do so to get this uh, going after we get done here tonight. So uh, Mary makes another great point here. Love Adam Thielen and his 
large pitcher, but it's time for him part ways. Unless he can take a massive reduction, and I'm not saying he's obligated to, so let me be clear. I'm not saying anybody's obligated to give any of their money back. That's not what nope. I'm saying. Stop <laughs> taking money from Thielen, yeah. Justin. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All I'm saying is that Adam's also going to have to understand that you know he's not a top 15 wide receiver anymore either. So I get yeah. what his wife was coming from. It's like, hey, why don't you throw Adam the ball once in a while and maybe he can still do something. Okay. Yeah. And when we did, he'd run backwards for five yards. So let's, <laughs> let's all be reasonable here, but. Uh, Caught it though. And it was a first down. Yeah. I was about to say, <laughs> what's up. Speaking of the boys right on cue, GG sports. Thanks for G-G. joining us. Wow, oh, that, you're late. G-G. Well, they got their own show going at the top of the hour. And I was going to mention. Oh, that's right. G-G. That's probably why they're on. So um, I'll say this again. Um, once we're done here, tune it over to GG Sports Podcast. They're going live at 8 o'clock Central Time here. So when we're done, uh, take your bathroom breaks, get your popcorn ready. They got a great Perfect. show going on here as well. Um, and everybody in the Minnesota area, yes, stay safe with all this blizzard conditions going around up here. Uh, and yeah. Hey, we're, we're, we're four, we're 80 four degrees here. We're yeah, four we're, sub, we're four subscribers away from hitting two hundred for the purple and skull media. So hey, come on, y'all. I know there's at least need, four of you. I know there's at least four right subscribers, now. man. Purple and scold. <clears throat> Purple and scold. Because we're scolded as fans. <laughs> I like that. I, I go know. Ahead and, all right. Go ahead and go. hit that subscribe button, man. Give us four more subscribers. Get us to to two hundred. I might do a giveaway. Might do a, if if we get to two hundred by the end of this video, I'll do a giveaway. We're at one ninety six right now. So we got what Come two on, minutes? Yo. Two minutes before we hop off here. So we'll finish up. I'll look back when we finish this video. If we're at 200, I'll do a giveaway on the page my next video. How about that? Shameless about plug. That? I'm four away from 450. So if there's four of you out there wow. on Dave's channel or on the Facebook channel that's not Big online. Big flex. Here, Over here flexing. <laughs> I'm just following your lead, SK. That's all that I've been doing. <laughs> Mary, you got four, 14 to 18 inches projected. Holy cow. Oh, Jesus. Holy cow. Yeah. Yo, oh, listen, hey, Mary, where are, you, Florida, where are you at in South Dakota? Where you, put where are you oh, at, Mary? Per, per, put where you at in South Dakota. I'm from South Dakota. Oh snap! Ooh yeah, giveaway, GG. You might want one in. We got to th- anybody man. who gets some got to thank GG because he's they're the ones that started that. Rap's gotten into it. I yeah. actually got a car when we get into that. Anyway, everybody's doing giveaways now. They're the giveaway guys. They're the, they're they're the, the giveaway, giveaway kings there. Well, just to kind of wrap this up here, just so everybody know. Um, we haven't quite worked out our schedules yet, but keep it tuned to. She's in Sioux Falls. She said, uh, "By the way, Dave, Sioux Falls." That- My sister lives there. There you go. Al's in Green Bay. Oh, oh, Al. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, so though. sorry, man. Sorry, you have to. Oh my God. Have the pain oh, and the agony. Uh-huh. But however, I hear it's the drunkest state in the in the 50 states. So. <laughs> yes, it's not even close. Uh, keep it tuned to all the channels. We're going to have uh, a lot of stuff coming down here the next couple of weeks. Obviously, uh, March 20th, I think, is the day. It was March 18th, one of those days where all signing bonus, excuse me, roster bonuses become due. So any moves that are going to be made to try to incorporate roster bonuses into signing bonuses so that they don't all hit um, on one uh, on this year's cap will be made. So we will go live. We will have some, uh, some content coming out on all the channels here. So if you don't, please do subscribe to us. We are a family. We like to believe that, Hey, what helps one of us helps all of us. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us here this evening. And like I said, uh, at the top of the hour, tune over to GG Sports Podcast. In fact, let me just go ahead and put those guys back up here one more time. So if you don't already follow GG Sports Podcast, follow them as well. Uh, Casey and Jamie are going to be breaking it down here in just a few minutes. Last thoughts, SK, on your maiden voyage here on Under the Lights. Man, it was, it was great. I had a great time. It's always fun talking Vikings with you guys. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to what we got planned uh, for this offseason, man. This draft coming up. Me and Dave, we're hitting hard, man. I know Dave's going to hit that draft board hard. I'm going to hit the draft board hard. It's, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a lot of things going on this offseason, not just Purple and Skull Media, but the Minnesota Vikings in general. So I'm excited, yeah. man. So are we. We haven't worked out all the details, but I think at least one, if not multiples of us, are going to go live on draft night. We might even do a oh, yeah. cast. Who the heck knows? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely do something at the start of free agency or if there's any breaking Viking news as well. Dave, anything else before we wrap up out of here, my friend? No, man, uh, GG Sports and I do uh, um, the Skull Experience on Wednesday night, uh, 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern now. So uh, we're getting more viewers at that time. So come check us out then. I don't remember if I got a guest on 
yet, <laughs> but uh, I, I've been I've been slacking lately. I don't want to abuse my uh, connections. But uh, hey, uh, and I'm also for sure 100 has been my life dream is to do a uh, day of draft uh, live show. So I am definitely doing. If anybody wants to be a guest or be a co-host or join. Oh, fine with it but i don't give a shit i'm gonna be on i'm gonna be doing my own <laughs> you guys can jump on if you want uh, it's been my dream ever since my dorm room i'm 19 years old man uh no, it's watching a 19 inch zenith uh television <laughs> half the people in here don't know what a zenith television is they've been man you know, the good old zenith Think about that for a second. Well, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna wrap us up, everybody, this evening. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. We very much appreciate you. If you could, like I say, go to the other channels, hit those like buttons, and let's uh, smash this YouTube algorithm. And if you don't already subscribe uh, to Purple and Skull Media, <clears throat> please consider doing that. Thanks again, everybody. You have a great evening, Skull Vikes. Peace.